The pandemic has ripped through the world, killing and sickening millions. But if you look at the economic hits that people have taken, it's been uneven because the pandemic has exposed the complete and utter failure of the system in the U.S., unlike, say, in Europe, to make sure that people can just hang on. No paid sick leave here means people couldn't stay home from work to get better. And if a person was sick, there was a good chance that she or he had to go to work sick to make sure that the paycheck would still be coming. And that forced that person into a workplace and maybe forced them to spread the virus. Unlike many places in Europe, for example, where, as I said, people have paid sick leave, not to mention universal health care. Both Europe and the U.S. had to shut down their economies, we know that, and both took hits in their output, meaning how much stuff was being made or whether cash registers were ringing in stores and restaurants, which they weren't because many stores and restaurants and bars had to shut down. But why was the unemployment rate so much lower in Europe in the first half of the year than the U.S.? It's simple. In Europe, there's a much bigger social safety net and specifically something called short time work. Now, I caught this nugget about short-time work in a piece written for an online publication called Social Europe, and it was written by Maria Figueroa, who is the Director of Labor and Policy Research at the Industrial and Labor Relations School at Cornell University. And Maria, in fact, joins us now to chat about this program that made life a bit easier for millions of Europeans. So we know, Maria, that Europe and the United States both have suffered gravely because of the pandemic. But what caught my eye in your really incredibly interesting uh, article is that I think most people know Europe and the United States have not handled the situation in equal ways. And a specific way that you talk about in your interesting piece is something called short time work. And the background to this is that, as you point out in your article, the euro area in Europe dropped by about 15 percent in the first half of 2020 in terms of output. And that was obvious because they had to shut down cafes. They had to shut down factories in the same way that the United States had to shut down. But Europe, in fact, had a higher drop of output than the United States. But the unemployment rate was lower. So the logic question is why? And you talk about something called short time work. So describe what short time work is in a few sentences. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, short time work is a program uh, that consists in employers not laying off their workers. Um, It consists in having the workers work fewer hours during the week. Mm-hmm. And so they are they receive lower pay from their employer, but they receive unemployment benefits for the hours of the week in which they are not working. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it helps them, you know, that that unemployment short, that unemployment benefit that they receive uh, serves them to uh, supplement, you know, or actually make up for the, la- the loss of income that they suffer because now they are working a uh, reduced number of hours per week. Now, so is, that, the, is the mm-hmm. difference between that and what happened in the first stimulus bill here in the United States is how widespread it is? Because as I remember, you'll correct me if I'm off on this, here in the U.S., there are some businesses who could say and apply for money and say, we will keep our workers working, but we want money from the government for that. Where at, And that was very targeted in some way. Not every company was able to do that. Either they didn't qualify, they decided not to ask for it. But in Europe, it's much more widespread. Is that the big difference? Um, is that's part of the difference, um, but uh, there are also many other factors. Um, yes, uh, w- w- there is certainly a, a cost uh, issue there. In fact, everything, all the factors are related to cost. 
uh, but there are also other factors related to the structure of our safety net. So mm -hmm. I will I will touch upon the two, okay. you know, uh, aspects of the problem. In terms of the cost, yes, uh, employers did not. Uh, uh, embrace uh, this uh, program, the short time uh, or share work program, as widely as in Europe, um, because there were not a lot of incentives for no. them to embrace them. Uh, it is still more cost effective for them to lay off employees rather than keep them you know, as part of their uh, payroll and, and reduce their hours and, you know, have them receive the, receive the unemployment benefits. And in some um, places, I think some employers in the United States, lots of use this opportunity, the excuse of the pandemic to get rid of people. That's correct. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, that's a a, a very old uh, strategy or tactic that employers use, you know, they take advantage of recessions uh, to uh, lay off workers, right? So, and, and reduce their, their labor cost. Um, so that's, uh, that's one issue, right? That um, the employers uh, did not, there wasn't much uptake, right? Mm -hmm. For the mm -hmm. program uh, because um, the uh, employers didn't see much of an advantage, right? And, and, and the reasons for that is because if they keep the employees in the payroll, they still have to pay for uh, the, the healthcare plan and retirement plans, if any, right? So, uh, and payroll taxes, et cetera. So um, if we don't deal with that part of the, you know, of the structure of our um, employment taxes, um, uh, and also on uh, with the structure of our safety net, you know, uh, we we will not see much of an increase in uptake for mm. this program. Mm. Yep. Uh, and, and that's the main difference with Europe, right? Because, um, you know, um, if employees, uh, uh, you know, have to work reduced hours, it doesn't really matter, right, to the employer or to the worker because they have um, universal health care, um, and they have better retirement uh, plans. Um, so uh, that, that, that's a big factor. Um, and also from the standpoint of employers anywhere, especially in Europe, they understand perhaps better, partly because unions are stronger there and unions have much more co-determination. Co they sit on these corporate boards, especially in places like Germany. They understand that when you get rid of people, there's a cost to bringing people back in terms of training and other factors when the economy turns around. So employers that aren't just completely stupid and greedy, uh, as they are here in the United States, in Europe, and I, I don't want to overstate as if they're great people uh, in Europe, it's because, as you point out, the social structure and the structure of society there gives more leverage to folks who want to see a decent social safety net. That's correct. And the point that you raise about uh, the strength of the unions, uh, that's, that's very important. Yeah, that, that's another big difference, you know, um, um, explaining uh, the low uptake here for this program. And it is that, you know, unions in Europe um, have more um, uh, yeah, of an advantage in terms of being able to negotiate uh, good benefits for workers and for society uh, mm. as a whole. So, and as you yeah. point out, in Europe, unlike here, some of the cost, the big one, healthcare, is not on the employer, it's on society. They have universal healthcare, unlike here. Now, one of the things that was quite interesting to me was that you pointed out that actually we do have short time compensation schemes in the United States. And I think that most people wouldn't know that they seem to either not be funded enough or just people are not aware of them. Yes, uh, there are many issues, again, you know, explaining why uh, so few uh, employers and, and even states, you know, uh, uh, adopt this program. Uh, it is true, uh, 26 uh, states have uh, this program in place. Um, 
they not always advertise uh, the program widely. So it doesn't mean that employers in each of those states know about the program. That's one issue too. Um, the funding is, a, is an issue. It's an issue because it is funded by uh, the uh, unemployment insurance funds uh, that the state run. But in the case of the of uh, situations like the pandemic, right, and, and this, yeah, uh, this actually happened, uh, the federal government stepped in and, and provided funding for, for the share uh, work program. Um, so that is one other thing that uh, I can't remember if it was pointed out in the article, but uh, uh, there should be a mechanism by which uh, the federal government support uh, uh, this program, uh, um, you know, in a, in a better uh, way and also uh, um, in an automatic way, right? Whenever there is a recession, right? Um, or a crisis like the one we're facing right now, there should be automatic triggers for increased funding for this program. Mm. And so that's, that's one thing, right? The, the funding is an issue. Um, the other uh, issue, and also that was waived, you know, it was waived uh, during the pandemic, which, you know, uh, really helped because every time uh, the, uh, the employers, you know, uh, have to, pay for the insurance uh, that is uh, experience based you know if they used to lay off a lot of workers that affects their insurance yes, uh, premium. rate right yeah, yeah. exactly and so that should be like a disincentive right for them to lay off workers um but it's, it's really sort of like a weak you know uh disincentive because the, because the rates are not really that high you know so and, let's end with the macro point to wrap up this discussion, because I think you've made this point uh, a couple of times that really what the pandemic did, and I've seen this in many aspects uh, around the country, it really highlighted the broken system that we have here. I mean, aside from the fact that the government did not respond to the pandemic and the way in which the CDC was not ready, but in terms of workers unemployment, all it did was really expose the weaknesses from the lack of paid sick leave, for example, which most people have in Europe, to the point you make, that's really what we should address, right, when we get out of this pandemic is we now see how weak the system is and we need to fix this because whether it be a pandemic or another Great Depression, this is going to happen and we can respond to this either in a weak way, a bad way that hurts people, or to hold on, get people enough resources and support so they can hold on. Exactly. Yeah, that's uh, that's definitely uh, how I see it too, you know, that this pandemic revealed uh, the weaknesses of our safety net uh, for all workers. You know, uh, even, uh, you know, uh, despite the very weak measures of providing unemployment benefits for uh, um, independent contractors and, and you know, um, it, it, it's and providing the, the, the short term loans for for employers not to, you know, lay off workers, uh, all of this, despite those um, tools, I think we need a stronger uh, approach right, uh, to, to um, protecting workers, protecting workers in the broader society, because like you said, this is gonna happen again. And, and, and the pandemic just revealed uh, all the vulnerabilities of our system, you know, and how inadequate our uh, safety net is to protect uh, workers and, and the broader society. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Maria, for those insights. And we'll have you back on the show as we get into the new year, 2021, looking at how we're emerging from uh, the pandemic or grappling with this as far as workers are concerned. Thanks again for being on the show. Great. Thank you. Thank you for having me.